Hey everybody, welcome back to Vegan Outreach. I'm Kim from Bramble.com and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a scrumptious red lentil and mushroom spaghetti bolognese. This is a great classic recipe and we can make it vegan even if we don't have access to some of the delicious vegan meat crumbles and vegan meat alternatives. If you have those lying around, you can of course make these with those, but I wanted to teach you a version that uses ingredients we can find at the regular supermarket. That way, if you don't have access to some of these vegan products, you can still make this at home and we're gonna get started right now. Now the star of this dish is of course that bolognese sauce and the little bit of meatiness that we're gonna add to it is in the form of some delicious red lentils. If you can't find red lentils, you can use regular lentils and just make sure to increase the liquid a little bit because those tend to you know, need a bit more liquid to cook through. And of course, some mushrooms and you can use portobello mushrooms, which is what I have here. You can use regular white mushrooms, anything you've got. We're gonna add a bit of olive oil to our pot we're gonna add some onions, a bit of carrot and celery, let's lower the heat a little bit, we're gonna slowly let this go. Another tip I have for you is to add a pinch of salt because that helps release all those juices. Now that our onion is nice and translucent, I'm gonna add that garlic. We're gonna let it cook just for a minute until that gets nice and fragrant. Now we add our mushrooms. I've raised the heat a little bit. I'm just gonna get that going. Now we add some tomato paste. Once that's nicely incorporated all together, we're gonna add a splash of white wine. Now, if you don't wanna use wine in this recipe, just continue with the other steps. It's totally fine. This is just gonna add a bit of extra flavor. And we're gonna let that alcohol evaporate. And once we see that it's almost dry again, we're gonna add our remaining ingredients. We have some crushed tomatoes, we've got a little bit of extra water, and then we add those red lentils. with some sea salt and pepper. We can add more later, but it's important to kind of add flavor to all of those layers. Now, herbs are delicious in any Italian sauce. I'm gonna add some now and some at the very end in the form of basil. Basil is a little more delicate. You don't want it turning dark on you in the sauce, but I am gonna add some Italian parsley and some fresh oregano. If you don't have fresh, you can add dried, but I found some fresh one in the market today, some fresh ones. <laughs> and I thought they would be great. So look at that beauty. We're just going to mix that all together. And now we're gonna cover the pot and we're gonna cook this at kind of low to medium heat for 30 minutes until those lentils are cooked through. Now I want you to occasionally check up on them and kind of stir everything around just to make sure that the lentils aren't sticking to the bottom of the pot. Our sauce is almost ready, so I've brought a big, big pot of water to a boil, and I'm gonna add some salt and my spaghetti. Cook your pasta until it's al dente, but before draining it, I want you to reserve about half a cup of that water. You might need it to thin out your sauce, depending on how you like your bolognese. You might not have to use it, but I always recommend it whenever you're making pasta and some kind of sauce. It can be really helpful. Let's see what we've got. Oh wow, that smells amazing. Okay, so as you can see, it's a very rich ragu. If you want it a little bit runnier, you can add some of that pasta cooking water that you reserved. So I'm gonna add just a little bit, since I like a little bit more sauce to mine. We also need to add that fresh basil. We always add fresh basil at the very end. It's always best to tear it with your fingers. Now we of course need to taste it and see if we need to add any more salt and pepper. Mmm, that's so good, it doesn't need a thing. If you feel that it needs a little bit more salt, go ahead and add it. Now I love to serve it with a 
a few extra fresh basil leaves just for that pop of fresh flavor and presentation. And of course, we always need that little alternative for Parmesan cheese, which in my case, my favorite way to have that kind of saltiness and that texture on top of our pasta is by grinding up some almonds and some sea salt in a food processor, or you can just buy ground almonds and mix them with the sea salt. It's so easy. You can of course also use your favorite vegan Parmesan cheese, whatever you have. And always some freshly ground pepper. Did you see how easy that was? Now you can make it at home. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.